this video is gonna be a hell of long guys let me tell you I recently uploaded a video sharing with you guys my thoughts and what the plan was for this this video in that video I mentioned that if if I was not making YouTube videos I wonder what <laughs> my collection would actually look like in its totality and I just started pulling polishes and it just kind of spiraled into something it's almost like a fantasy football but i'm gonna call this a fantasy nail polish curated collection that fits my personality i keep a lot of polishes and a lot uh, the main reason for that is obviously because i i love my collection but a lot of it does have to do with the fact that I make videos. But would I not be doing any of that? I wouldn't be keeping everything that I have. I would keep a lot of it, but not everything. I very much enjoy making YouTube videos. I enjoy making my shop, my stash type of videos, collection reviews and, and, and comparison videos. So I'm, I'm not getting rid of my entire collection. Now, I may get to a point one day where this is going to be enough for me if i feel like another day though maybe i want to fill another rack and that makes me happy that's okay too like you i think we're all on the journey to curate our own perfect collection that fits our personality that fits our taste right and i i'm not the person to say how much of how, what the quantity is for each individual person because that's your own personal journey as it is mine so uh, I pulled a bunch of polishes and just placed them up here and I'm gonna go over each individual polish uh, with you guys I did make sure though that I Covered myself for every single season. We're talking spring summer fall Winter I do have a lot of dark polishes up here because that's just what I gravitate towards my favorite season is the fall and a lot of polishes that you wear in the fall they work very well for the winter time. Now, in that previous video, I mentioned that I solely wanted to keep to this one rack. <laughs> that didn't happen, guys. I actually pulled down all of my luxury polishes that I had on this small little rack, and I specifically only put up here all of my toppers. Again, this is a collection that fits me. I love glitter toppers. Uh, I don't think that's a surprise. I like the different... Um, different finishes, different reflexes, different undertones, and yada, yada, yada. And this fits about 28 bottles. So I'm going to go over that as well. This rack here fits about 110, 113 bottles, give or take, depending on bottle shape and size. Let's get into all of the polishes. I think that a black and white polish is essential to somebody's nail polish collection. Uh, because you can use them by themselves obviously use them as a basis for glitter toppers the white specifically you can also use as an undie for neons they're just very versatile you can incorporate them into nail art this one specifically will stamp very well this is color clips french tip this is a one coat white which is the reason why it's up here the black that i'm currently using is from the sally hansen heart as nails line this is called black heart i think any black that has a good formulation will work this one works very well. The only issue I have with that one is that the brush is super, super slim. A squishy white, I think, comes in handy as well. I have Marshmallow from Essie. This is a little bit more sheer and kind of curly like right? So it looks just slightly bit more airy, I feel, on the nails. And then a white with a drop of black in it. There's a lot of white polishes up here, guys, because I love my white manicures. And I want to make sure that I'm covered for every single season. And I think that a white with a, a drop of black that grays it out a little bit is perfect for fall and winter. I could not find I Can Only Wear OP OPI. That's the one that's easily accessible now. So I pulled this one because <laughs> I can't find the other one. This is my boyfriend Scales Walls from OPI and it's a cream. So let me compare it just to a regular white. You guys can see how it's grayed out just slightly. Some whites with some kind of reflex I adore. And this one specifically, I really love. I've previously made a topper out of this, but I gave it to my sister-in-law. This is She's a Star from Salon Perfect. You can get this one opaque on its own, but I'll probably end up making some kind of topper out of it because the reflex in this one is super, super beautiful. This is made up of white micro glitter, but then it has a strong gold flash. 
and then you see little reflexes of blue and green and slightly pink and it just looks so beautiful i don't know my face is in the way so maybe that's why it's not focusing but it's just so pretty and that one can get opaque on its own it is super super thick so so i usually have to thin it out a lot this one is happy anniversary this is a glass fleck white I would have put a pearl white up here, but you know, it did kind of fit everything up here. And I really like the finish of this. I think it gives a very similar look, although, because the particles in this are larger and I think they re reflect a little bit more. I can use it as a topper. I can sponge it on like I did with my uh, glazed donut nails, or I can wear it on its own at three counts. It's just really, really beautiful. I'm editing now and I totally changed my mind, guys. I definitely would love to have a pearl white in my collection. And I think that's just the beauty of going over all the polishes and maybe add something that you would definitely miss and a pearl white is definitely it so i went out and and no, not went out i went and pulled the kyoto pearl from opi let me show you a comparison between this one and happy anniversary because the particles are different as you can see and even the undertones are different that's why i like leaving a little bit of the portal room so if i you know, I would feel like, oh, I would really enjoy having this in my, in my, you know, curated collection that I can make, you know, I have the room where I can actually add something into it. And then the last one that I have with the little shimmer, the solid white, I have another one that's a holographic, is uh, this one, which is called Ephemeral from Forley. It has a strong golden little flash there. Um, let me compare it to She's a Star, because they kind of have a same same look only that the particles and she's a star is larger a white linear holographic from color club uh this one is called what's your i can't read it i'll have to leave it down below i'll link i'll li not link but i'll list all of the polishes down below this is a white linear holographic that has almost a very fine little shimmer that leans a little bit pink and peachy depending on how the light is hitting it and then a sheer this is ends up looking white on the nails at three coats but it is slightly blushed let me compare it to just a basic white so you guys can see this i love because the formula is really really good it has a very fine shimmer that i feel helps the application of this polish it's called lace is more and this one doesn't have as much white as marshmallow so i feel like it helps with the application as well it's just really, really great. But if I just want a very sheer coat of this, just one good coat and it's even. One that's a sheer pink, but that has a silvery white fleck in it. It's uh, These are not straight up glitters because they don't stick to the nail. They're almost a little bit more flat than a regular hex glitter, right? This is from Orly and it's called Snow Worries. And it's just so beautiful and I love seeing that reflex on the nails. It's just amazing. Two sheer pinks and I picked one that is warmer, one that is more cool leaning. I have Confetti from Orly and I have Sheer Fantasy from Essie. Two pastel pinks. I was not going to do without either one of these guys. One leans more cool and this one leans warmer. This is Fiji from Essie and Frida Rome from Essie. So Frida Rome and then Fiji. Let's go like this. A pink linear holographic. This is the only one that I have ever bought because I've never found a need to go out and buy another one just because I love this one so much. Whenever I do run out of this one though, I will replace it with another pink linear hollow because they don't make this one anymore. Unfortunately, this is from Color Club and this is called Halo Graphic. It is so beautiful. I will wear this any time of the year, guys. It is amazing. Two brighter pinks, one that leans a little bit more purple from Orly. This is called Lips Like Sugar. To some, this may look pur purple to me. I put it with my pink category because it looks pink to me. And then I have a bubblegum pink from China Glaze. It's called Bottoms Up. It is not what I'm wearing on my nails right now, though. This one topped the one that I'm wearing on my nails only because I've had Bottoms Up longer and I have an attachment to it. But really, that's the only reason because I love the one that I have on my nails. And then this one, which is a magenta cream from Orly. This is called String of Hearts. I wanted to pull something that can be versatile from summer because it is bright enough, but it's a perfect color for the fall and the winter if I want something just a little bit brighter. This is called String of Hearts. 
and then a fuchsia polish is fuchsia flame from covergirl i don't have too many fuchsias but i really love this one specifically mattified during fall and winter i think it looks beautiful i love it my grandma e pinks i love my grandma pinks guys these two i made sure to pick one out that has a gold shimmer and one that has a silver shimmer this is called just lanying around it is slightly dusty and you can see that little uh, silver shimmer. It's not overly visible on the nails, but I can see it. And then I have a Troublemaker from Koki. And this one beat out, I think it's the one from Essie, only because it is deeper and I wanted a little bit of a difference between, <laughs> you know, my grandma polishes. And then two nudes that I love. This one specifically, I am currently wearing on my toes and it is the perfect nude, guys, to wear any time of the year. It's almost undetected on my toes right now, but it's still, it looks very clean. I have Simply from LA Colors. It's more of a skin tone type of nude, and it's super flattering. And then my favorite pinky nude is Dress Me Up from China Guys. I have backup bottles of Dress Me Up because they don't make it anymore. But I think having an option of, you know, one that's a little bit more pink leaning, one that's more skin tone leaning is really, really great. A nude holographic and the only one that I have in my collection. I know some of you guys mentioned ILMP has some options as well. But I, again, have never found the need to go out and buy another one because I still have this one. I still love this one and I enjoy wearing it. This is from Bliss Polish and it's called Nirvana. They don't make this one anymore. So whenever I do run out of it, I will replace it with, you know, something that is available. So I'll probably end up going with ILMP. And then I figured I would pull out something that's more of a kind of beigey yellow tone type of nude polish right because it always comes in handy this one is pretty much the only one that i have sorry my chair is super noisy pretty much the only one that i have that's almost putty like and it's from pure eyes and this is called shore bet and it's just a really great color to wear during really any time of the year because it's so neutral. But in the fall, I think it's great. And I think every collection should have a gray cream. You can use it by yourself. You can mattify it. I last used it in a Christmas nail art design. And it was beautiful, guys, because it's such a neutral base. You can really do anything. This is called Gauntlet from Defy and Inspire. It is suffering from ugly bottle syndrome, but it's a beautiful gray. And then kind of mushroomy, taupey type of colors. I have two here. This is my ultimate favorite taupe that has beat out any taupe from any, any brand. And this is my last bottle of wet cement, so I'll have to find a replacement. I have Commander and Chic from Sally Hansen, so I'll probably, you know, end up pulling that one because it's my next favorite. But this is wet cement from wet and wild it's kind of brown slightly purple slightly grayish right and this one is my perfect mushroom color i first wore this this past winter i fell completely in love with it it straight up looks like mushroom it's slightly brown gray and it almost has a little bit of a green undertone at least when i wear it on my nails and the formula is just really good. This is called a Brawn Fume from Chanel. And these are different. So I made sure to give myself a couple of options. In a chocolate brown, I have this one. It's the one that's really decadent looking in my collection. This is from Essie and it's called Don't Be Choco Lot Late <laughs> Latte. <laughs> Something of the sort. It's just such a decadent, rich chocolate brown. Hot Toffee from Simple Colors. I love, but again, I was trying to reduce. Two super unique polishes from China Glaze that I did not want to do without. I have, this is Lug Your Designer Baggage, and I have Mahogany Magic. Lug Your Designer is more cool leaning, and it has the gold glitter, if it'll focus at some point. And Mahogany Magic is a little bit more brown, yellow, and slightly green. Let me do this. They're just super unique. A couple of blues, one of which is more periwinkle. This is Secret Periwinkle from China Glaze. The only one that I pulled. It's such a beautiful, beautiful color. And then I have a Dory from Zoya for the very fact that the color is amazing, number one. Number two, this one just tends to stick to my nails very, very well. Both can be worn, you know, spring, summer, and the winter. The only 
cobalt blue that I pulled is Endless Blue from Simple Colors. It has always been my favorite and has topped every single one because it's... Hmm, the reason why I like this one over top of Pacific Blue is because I feel like Pacific Blue is just slightly lighter and more dusty to where this one's just brighter. Still dusty, but brighter. And it's just perfect. And the formula is really great with this one. Not with it, but in, you know, it has a great formula. Two deeper type of blues. I have uh, Russian Navy from OPI. Kind of was a toss up between this one and uh, Sailor from Zoya. Because it's Sailor from Zoya is lighter and more dusty. I feel to where this is just a deep, dark navy blue. But I love this one. It's so good. Especially for the toes. I love wearing navy blues as pedicures during winter. And a sapphire blue. My favorite one is Chopsticks and Stones. It's a blue shimmer. And it's so beautiful. There is a glow effect on the nails with this polish. And kind of like a sea blue that I can actually do without. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna mm, I'm gonna pull this one down because I think if I'm comparing sea blues, I really really love this one from Skyline above this one. But this is I truly assure you, just an FYI. I freaking love that polish, but I'm gonna remove it because I want I like leaving a little bit of wiggle room. If you know, because it leaves me a little bit of room for growth. Skyline from Starly. This is a microfoil flaky, and it's super super glowy, guys. This is called emerald. I don't think this is color is quite emerald. It's slightly bit more blue, and, but it's so beautiful and super glowy. Let me compare it to Skyline so you guys can see, because it will bring out the green in emerald from LA Colors, but it, I don't think to me it's, it's more blue than green. I have a blue texture from Zoya. This is called Liberty, and this one will work really well for the fall and for the winter. I'm just not realizing that the... the the, the cap is starting to feel sticky. All of the all of the caps from Zoya are rubberized, so I need to check on the rest of my bottles because it's going to be a bit annoying. But I mean, the polish is really, really beautiful still. And then I have a, an aqua blue and a turquoise color. My favorite aqua is Dior Splash. And this one can work for spring, for summer, for winter even. It's just such a beautiful color. And the turquoise that I pulled is Buzzling Bazaar from Essie. And it was a toss-up between this one and Too Yacht to Handle. And the, okay, Buzzling Bazaar is just slightly bit more green, I feel, in tone, like in person. It's just, it's almost lighter. And it almost has a little bit more green. And I really like that on the nails. It makes it look even more vibrant. This one takes two to three coats depending on application. To wear two yacht to handle considering the color, this takes two coats. It's such a green formula. Compared to other turquoise type of polishes like this, this is the best formulated of them all. But because Buzzling Bazaar has that green undertone, it can't, it beat it. And so for that reason, Buzzling Bazaar made it onto this nail polish wrap. I can never do without a mint. I love mint for spring and summer. And I pulled a green mint that I really enjoy. This is called Thesos. It's a cream from NARS. It's so funny when it came down to picking my, my favorite mints. And I, I went straight to this one because I really like it. And I have a sage green. The only sage green I have up here is from Butter London. This is one of my all-time favorite polishes. It is a two-fingered salute. They do not make this one anymore, but there are some dupes out there. Um, Succulent Garden from, what's it called? Zerk Colors. They make something similar. But the closest that I have found is from Moonshine Manny. It's called Two Weeks Notice, I believe. And she is the one that has come the closest to the base color. The base color of this polish is what drew me in. And I full on stayed for the glitter in here, guys. The glitters in here are not uniformly shaped. And they're like little red particles that scatter really nicely on the nails. The ones from Moonshine Manny, though, are hexes but they still look really beautiful. Her polish is amazing. I have that one. I wanted to buy it to compare it and it's pretty close. My favorite chartreuse has always been Innocent. Don't often find that I have to buy another chartreuse because I enjoy this one so much. And then like a pea soup type of green. Different from, let me show you Mahogany Magic. Because Mahogany Magic is kind of like my Kakita Brown <laughs> type of polish. It's just, these two are so, so unique in my opinion from China, guys. I love them so much. So you can see 
Mahogany Magic is just more brown, right? This is Trend Center. It's more of a pea soup type of green, and it has a very small golden shimmer. Maybe you guys can see the little shimmer. It's so beautiful. I love this color. And this can work for spring, for fall. I've worn it in the summer, guys, to be honest with you. Actually, topped over with Shine of the Times. So amazing. Amazing combination. The shifting is subtle, but you can see it. It's just, it was just such a beautiful mani. And then I definitely wanted to pull a brighter type of green um, uh, just to have variety. <laughs> that was very important for me. I pulled out a uh, plastic jungle from Orly. This is a beautiful Kelly green and it's a cream. It's just so beautiful. A jade green and uh, my favorite out of all. I do have a couple more and I still love those, but I pulled this one. This is Emerald Bay from China Glaze. It's just so beautiful. The formula is amazing. This looks amazing as a manicure. As a manicure, it doesn't really matter. And it's just so good. It's so beautiful. I pulled out two regal type of green shimmers. And yes, I want both. I would have both. <laughs> if this was the reality of my collection, I would definitely have both of these. I love them. This is just more golden, I feel. This is Wallace from Butter London. Look at that. You cannot beat that. <laughs> I kept going back and forth and pulling one down and putting the other one up. And, and in the end, I was like, no, I cannot. I have to have both. This is Borealis. And you can see it's just, it's not as golden as Wallace. And Borealis just seems to have almost like a little hint of a blue flash. That's not that visible on the nails, but I don't know. I feel like the particles are just different. They're slightly larger. The tone of green is different. A capers or olive type of green, but this one has a gold shimmer. This is single Singer Auto Salvage, one of my favorite nine zero lockers ever. I really love it. It is suffering from ugly bottle syndrome, but don't let this this bottle fool you. This is beautiful on the nails. I love it, and then it has like a little gold shimmer. This green is more of a mossy type of green. It is from Orly and it's called Wild Willow. This totally beat out any olive green guys that I have in my collection. Like this is perfect. I can only have this one and be completely content. Let me tell you, it's just that beautiful. I had to pull out my green dual chrome that I pull every fall. I wear this polish only once a year because they don't make it anymore. <laughs> so I do treasure it. This is Green on the Runway from OPI. It goes from a green to the red. I don't know if you guys can see that. Two glittery type of polishes for the Christmas time. Another pixie dust from Zoya. This is called Elfie. And then I have Celebratory from China Glaze. This has bar glitter. Let's see. It's a focus. Come on, camera. <laughs> focus on the polish. It's just, these are so beautiful and it's not focusing. Oh my Lord, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. Maybe because they're so reflective. I'm not really sure. I was having a really hard time because I really wanted to put Grinch worthy, but I can't justify having so many greens. I don't know. I just like the room and space, but honestly, like a brighter, this green I wore during the Christmas time. I'm going to put it up here because I really love it. I keep going back and forth. This is Grinch worthy. It is a brighter type of green for the Christmas time, but it can be worn any other time really because it's so bright, right? But I wore it this past Christmas and oh my word, I've never used a bright green like this during the holidays and I freaking loved it. I did a little Skittles Manny adored it so i'm gonna put it up here whatever the only christmas green that has a cream finish that i pulled is off tropic and really and honestly this is so well formulated the the formula is just really great it's okay get one coat two kind of peacocky type of polishes i have watermelon rind and this can be worn on its own or layered over a peacocky type of teal which i usually like to do because i feel like Watermelon rind just adds a little bit of an extra reflex. So this is retrograde from Orly. That shift that you see in the bottle is very subtle on the nails. And then watermelon rind. Two purples. And my lightest purple in my collection is Gojunsa. And it is my favorite. 
and I have repurchased this bottle. I've bought it and given it away because I love it so much. So this is the lightest purple that I own. And then I have my favorite orchid, which is Tempest from Simple Colors, both creams. Uh, purple that I feel works for the fall and the winter because it's slightly bit more dusty. This is called One Hecla of a Color. The formulation of loan of this polish makes it onto this wrap because it's so good. And then I have Get Down. This type of mulberry color or deep, let's say a deep dusty rose type of color with a purpley undertone, right? Beat out Cosmopolite from Dior because it's just it's just a little bit deeper, has a little bit more purple, and I realized that I really love this one. I don't want to be without it. Two deeper purples. One, though, that can work for summer, really in the fall. This ultraviolet type of color is so beautiful. It's darker, but it, there's still a glow effect on the nails. This is called Synthetic Symphony from Orly. It's a purple, but it is very cool leaning. It has a lot of blue in it. It's coming off way more purple here, but it has more of a blue undertone. And this purple beat out purple with a purpose from OPI. I really like this purple a lot. This is Purple Tonium from China Glaze. And you can see there, this one has that coolness on the outer side or the sides of the bottle. And then it just warms up a little bit in the center. And I definitely wanted to pull purples that were a slightly bit warmer. So I have Viking in a Winter Wonderland. It's more red, but it's like a deep purple that doesn't look black on the nails. It always looks purple. This is my go-to purple for many, many years, and it is a cream. It has a great formula. And then the warm purple that I pulled with glitter in it is Midtown Magic. This is an old one, um, but China Glaze made another one that's reminiscent to this one. The base is more plummy, if you can see, and then it has the gold little shimmer. Another purple that I really enjoy is Peyton from uh, from Zoya, and this is a scattered holographic. And a vampy shade. I finished Linkin Park, so I pulled Wicked and put it up on my rack. But Linkin Park, I feel, is slightly different because that's a blackened purple. This is a blackened red. To me, the undertone of Wicked is red-toned. Uh, but I think any vampy type of shade like this is so so dark right it's super awesome any time of the year really but i tend to gravitate towards them during fall and winter and i feel like they look super super chic on the nails so this is wicked a couple of berry polishes from zoya blaze which is my favorite scattered holographic guys this is so beautiful it has a raspberry jelly base and scattered hollows it's so beautiful and my favorite zoya of all time i don't think this should be a surprise is roxy this has metallic glitters and a raspberry jelly base it is so beautiful maybe that fact that it's out of focus is good because you guys can see the reflex this these are just amazing my favorite berry shade that's not quite a cream it has a little bit of jelliness uh, to it so it just dry glossy is very naughty from essie and i finished bottles of this one as well. It's my favorite toe color during winter, during fall and during winter. It's just amazing. I usually have to be careful with this one because it does stain the skin around the nails. So, you know, I just take my time in application, but I love it. I always go back to this one. It's not too berry, but it's not too rich. So it works, you know? And then a red kind of jelly type of polish where I can do jelly sandwiches or what have you. This is called Highest Bitter. It's from a watercolor line from Essie. And if you can see here how sheer it is, super, super sheer. So I can put it on its own and maybe use a topper, but I've used it for jelly sandwiches in the past. And it's so beautiful because it is so transparent, guys. <laughs> it's really pretty. A red cream type of polish. The formula is very similar to Berry Naughty, but you can see maybe. This is definitely a red, red, not, not Berry. This is a Jungle Red from NARS. Um, another one from Sally Hansen that I really love, um, would have made it up here, but I, I couldn't, I just know. This is the red that I feel will work very well for fall and winter, really. It's just so good and it dries glossy as well. Two red shimmers and I feel like two different textures works. So I pulled I'm Not Really a Waitress, which is my gift wrap, gift wrapping paper type of red. 
I don't have anything else like this one in my collection. I refuse to buy anything else because this just has always satisfied me. It's so beautiful. And then I have this red shimmer. I think red shimmers look beautiful. This is red it twice from Sally Hansen. And there's a close up so you guys can see there is a difference between the two. Both super awesome for the holiday season. Three red glitters. <laughs> Let's do these two. These two are from Indie Makers. This is my favorite 90 lacquer. It kind of competes with Singer Auto, but I want to say this is my ultimate favorite uh, 90 lacquer polish ever. This is Be Positive. And the base is a red jelly. It has silver metallic glitters and matte black glitters. This is perfect. The little silver glitters, they look like little, like there's little glares of light coming off the nails. It's beautiful. And then I have Elm Street from Colores de Carol. This is my Halloween polish and it has been for the last couple of years. This will be my third year and this one will be on my nails again. And this time around, I think I'm going to use it as a topper. So the base is a burnt orange but once layered it ends up looking red on the nails and then you see the color shifting flakes the only red chunky glitter that does get a pick on its own that i think i eat i don't have anything else really uh is morgan taylor's rare as rubies this one though i don't like wearing it on its own i prefer wearing it as a layering component and most specifically the last manicure i wore it with was paired up with this glitter topper only reason why this one made it up here it is beautiful on its own but i feel like there is so much glitter in this polish that once layered at two three coats it just looks too thick it's too much glitter almost so in order to make it work because it is beautiful can you see that i mean amazing right I prefer to layer it, right? So do one layer of this, then go back to this this glitter, then add another thin layer of the rarest rubies, and then finish off with Freedom. Freedom is a glitter topper that's very, very warm leaning. And you can see the undertones of both polishes on the nails, and so it makes it almost slightly shifty. It's just such a beautiful combination. And that's why this polish is up here, guys. <laughs> that's why I love it. Two OPI reds. I pulled a red cream. This is Coca-Cola Red, slightly warm leaning. So it's different from some of the other reds that I have up here. This would work during spring and summer, but I also pulled out a red that has a little reflux to it. This is Heart and Console. Really love this one from the, I think it was the Xbox collection or something. I find it to be super interesting. It's red, but it has a little bit of, I see a little bit of pink and a little bit of orange. It's such an interesting reflective red polish the only thing with the type of finishes from opi like this is that i find that i get to pour it really really fast so i do have to touch up my nails every couple of days not only with a layer of polish but also with a layer of top coat but it does look super glowy and so beautiful the only neon red that i pulled is orly's fireball i have another neon red I actually had a couple, one that dried out from China Glaze and then a neon red from Zero Colors. But I pulled this one just because I've had this one far longer and attachment again. So this one has a little shimmer that you can see delicately on the nails. It's just so pretty and the formula is amazing. And the only neon coral that I pulled is this one. This is Bikini from Julie G. This is my favorite neon coral because it leans slightly pink. And I have backup bottles of this one. Like if this is the only neon coral I get to wear for the rest of my life, I will be completely happy, guys. <laughs> I love it. Formula is tricky. It is difficult, but I love it, especially as a pedicure. This is amazing. Like I love this color so much. It's worth it to go through the struggle of the application, you know, because I like the, the color so much. And then two yellows. Now, I'm waiting for a holographic yellow to come in the mail, and that's why I left some room here, because I feel like that's where I, I want just a little bit of a variant here. These are the only two yellow creams that I pulled, though. This one, which is Never a Dullest Moment from OPI, is a muted yellow, so it's not quite sunshiny, but I feel like it can work for... Uh, spring, summer, uh, especially fall, but I have even worn this in the winter and it looked, <laughs> it looked really great. The formula is really good. Get to pick a three coats, very common for a yellow. And then my favorite mustard is Mustard the Courage from China Glaze. I would like to look back to this video maybe in a year or so and see if my tastes have changed. Two oranges, 
this one is called kit you later now okay this one would be up here but i finished this bottle i really like this orange from sally hansen it's called sun kissed because it works for spring summer and the fall if you want a little bit of a brighter orange it's just such a beautiful one the closest one i literally pulled anything that came closest to this orange is kit you later from orally i love it it's bright but you know it can still work for the fall i'm also going to remove catch me if you can from morgan taylor i want something a little bit more squash looking so i'm going to add sweetie pie this one the base is like an orangey yellow but more yellow and it has multi-shifting flakies so that one's gonna go right there a pumpkin type of orange i have plain koi from essie because it has more brown in it compared to a lot of my other um, pumpkin oranges this is just my favorite out of all and then a brighter orange that works for summer and the fall that's a shimmer is from opi this is called luxurious it's from the ds line the base is in a like an orangey red shimmer and then the gold particles are slightly larger it's just so reflective my favorite bricky red polish is brownstone from china glaze i have backups of this bottle it's just it's so beautiful i love it i love this bricky brown red cream it has a great formula and i adore the color and my favorite copper polish i'm so excited because it's taken me years to find my perfect copper polish for my skin tone is this one from orly this is called bronze ambition i don't really understand why they called it bronze this is not bronze to me this looks like a copper pipe look at this it has so much red in it. It's just so beautiful and super flattering against my skin tone. Two that I feel look like fall in a bottle. I have this one, which is called Crushed Lava from Heart Candy and Nutcracker. Neither of these polishes are, ex are available anymore, sadly. And I pulled them both because Nutcracker to me leans more brown, if you can see. And it has more of that burgundy tone to where... Crushed on Lava is, has more red. You see that burgundy, slightly pink tone, but then you see the rustiness on the side of the bottle. It's just so beautiful. Let's see if the, the camera will focus. What a pretty they, they are. I actually had to pull this one from the side because I didn't realize that I had pulled it down. And this is a favorite of mine and I don't, I don't want to do without it. This is a Simple Colors Bite Me. The base of this is a very fine red, like burnt red shimmer, but then it has larger, it has larger black glitters. And this can be layered at three coats and get opaque. It's just so beautiful and so unique. For um, the fall season, Glitter Goblin from China Glaze. So it has a mix of orange and silver holographic glitter. And I have this one from Orly. I love the glitters that orally pulled out i think it was in a winter collection not last year but the year before oh my god i love them so much this is called inexhaustible charm and the reason i love this particular glitter is because it has a mix of gold and pink and the mix of both of those tones almost makes this look like an apricot glitter i don't have anything like this like at all it's so beautiful by itself dry brushed to add a little bit of sparkle on the nail i mean it's just so beautiful and i have two rose golds here and yes i do want two rose golds in my collection i think at all times one because it's a little bit more silvery leaning and the other one's very very warm it has a lot of red tones in it i have lucid dream i was previously wearing this on the toes it had, just has more red in it compared to this one which is supernova from simple colors it has more silver in it as you can see but both rose gold they're both really beautiful both have a great formula and a strong yellow gold is solange from zoya it's interesting to see out of all of my zoyas which ones i pulled out <laughs> especially the the texture polishes because i love texture polishes solange is a super yellow gold let me compare it to just a straight up yellow gold so you can see how much more yellow it is i have something that's even more yellow gold guys i'll show you guys in a moment Solange is just so beautiful and super flattering. Even in the summer, this looks amazing. I love it. And then a Christmas glitter. Cannot do without Christmas themed glitters. Although it only comes once a year. I think it's great to have some kind of red, green, and, uh, and gold glitter mix. This is Twinkle Lights from China Glaze. And it's just a glitter bomb. 
but I wanted just a solid gold micro glitter and I pulled my favorite ornament. And this one can be worn as a topper, can be worn by itself. It's just, it's just not as yellow gold, right? It's a little bit more toned down. It's so pretty, classic. My favorite metallic glitter, though like chunky metallic glitter that's gold and it has a little bit of a blush tone is Grace from NCLA. This is another one that I have backups of because I love it so much. It has like a smallest hint of pink. I just love it. And this gets opaque on its own. This is like, I have to really remove so much off of the brush to even try to dry brush it and get a little scattered look because there's so much glitter in it. And then just a regular gold, yellow gold glitter that does get opaque on its own. I can dry brush this one. Let me compare this one to my favorite ornament because these are different. I think having variety in glitters to get different, you know, different manicures and stuff like, I mean, slight variations, but you know what I mean. Like, I just love my glitters. Anyways, point is, I really like this one. I like all the glitters in this collection that Aurelie pulled out. This is uh, Untouchable Decadence. It's just straight up gold. <laughs> it's so beautiful. And then a gold shimmer. I only pulled one. <laughs> I had another one up here, but I had to take it down. Uh, I have a golden eye. Because it could be worn on its own as a base also for some, some of these glitters, right? If I only want to do one coat of the glitter or whatever, or pull my glitter toppers. I have a couple of silvers here, and I wanted a couple of silvers, you guys. One of which is from Starly. This is a micro uh, foil flakes, and they're silver flakes, like Skyline. This is, these two I bought at the same time, and I really like them. They're super reflective on the nails. I pulled this one because this is just, this looks like crushed metal on the nails. It's so beautiful. It's from Sally Hansen. It's part of the Satin Glam line. So it does dry slightly like a demi matte, right? Um, so I do usually add a glossy top coat, but it's more cool leaning. Can you guys see how much more blue it leans? And then look at the particles. They're just so beautiful. These are not flakies. These are just like micro shimmers. A pink holographic glitter that gets opaque on its own. And this one specifically has a touch of pink in it. And it's called Sunrise Bedtime from OP. I'm shaking it up because it's so thick, guys. Every time I pull this polish, I have to, have to, have to thin it out. And it almost has a slight linear effect. I pulled that holographic pearls from Revlon. It is a silver holographic, if you can see, different from Sunrise Bedtime. Look how much more pink Sunrise looks. It's so pretty. <laughs> I have Mirabelle from Orly, and that one's just different. Um, that one has different sized silver holographic to where this is just consistent in size. And I just, I don't know, there's something about holographic pearls that I just enjoy so much more. Maybe I have a backup. I have to really look. I thought I did at some point, but maybe I finished it. I'm also going to remove a frost smitten from Orly. Originally had it on this rack, but I want a brighter pink glitter. So instead, I'm going to put in sparkles from Wet n Wild. I last wore it during the holiday time in a Skittles Manny and with some nail art. And it was really, really beautiful. It reflects quite a bit. And this one has a mix of pink and silver glitters. Let's get to the charcoaly kind of smoky silver. My favorite one is Sea Girl from Orly because it's slightly warmer. It almost has like these little bronze little shimmers <laughs> that warms it up a little bit. So it almost on my nails, it slightly pulls, like it has a, a green undertone. It's really interesting. It's just so flattering. But they don't make this polish anymore. So whenever I do run out of this particular bottle, my next favorite smoky silver, let me mention it, is Diamond in the Raw from uh, from Simple Colors. Just want to make sure that that's what it's called. Diamond in the Raw. It's a smoky silver as well, but you can see how much more warm Sea Girl is. That's what I love about Sea Girl. Two black jellies with silver metallic glitters. Yes, I found the need for two. Metallic for Life is my favorite because that one leans a little bit more teal and I feel like that's what allows that polish to look extra reflective on the nails. So what I did this past year for New Year's, uh, the, well, not New Year's, but the, the month of December, close to New Year's Day, I put these two polishes on and just layered them. I have Nightbreed, so a black jelly with silver metallic glitters, and then this glitter is what I feel is a little bit more special. This is called In the Moonlight, and In the Moonlight leans just slightly bit more blue. Can you guys see that? So this one topped over Nightbreed because there's different size metallic glitters, right? 
and different tones of glitters i just feel like it adds a little bit more interest on the nails like a little bit more dimension and i just really enjoyed this manicure together so some of these polishes that i put up here is because i enjoy them with another polish let me get into my toppers now i left a little bit of wiggle room up here i think i hope <laughs> because i have a linear holographic topper that i bought that is on its way i think that having <laughs> different holographics is something that i really enjoy and that have a different effect on the nails right this is my favorite for the longest guys holographic topper and it's from INM. It's their holographic uh, top coat because the holographic in this is so fine. So you can build up intensity as you keep layering. That's what I like about this. The shimmer is super, super fine. And it's just so, so beautiful. I initially had fairy dust from, let's see if we can get it to focus, from China Glaze. But instead, I'm going to opt for a gold holographic just to add a little bit of variety so i'm going to put this one right here and that's the one that i actually have on my nails right now over top of coca-cola red sun's not coming in very well <laughs> um so lighting's not the best but i do have it on my nails and then this one because it has so many different shapes of glitter in it and they're holographic and silver and it's from la colors it's called shimmer mist it's just so beautiful this glitter this is a glitter bomb this over top of a black perfect new year's manning <laughs> i love it it's so tacky but classy at the end is what i like to call it because i love my tacky glitters guys i think a unicorn type of uh, unicorn p type of topper is always really nice this is the one that i've had the longest in my collection so i pulled this one out i have it this bottle halfway used this is called pearl Spective. over a black over really any color black navy um aqua colors doesn't really matter this leans slightly purple and pink China the Times beat out any <laughs> flaky type of uh, topper. And the reason for that is because this is an older polish and yet the formula is still very, very good. It hasn't thickened up. I have another one from Moonshine Manny and although I really like that one, I cannot believe how thick it is. It is ridiculous and possibly because they don't add as, you know, any makers don't add as many chemicals in their polish. So anyways, for that reason, I feel like I just stuck with this one <laughs> and it's a flaky topper. And you see the shifting. Let's get it to work. You guys can see the shifting. It's just so beautiful. I did though pull another flaky topper. And I pulled this one because it is the only other one that I have that's transparent like this. That shift a different color. This one has more of a pinky purple shift if you can see. And it's called Watch the Sunset from Colores de Carol. But do you see how I have this bottle upside down and look at how frozen it is in here. It is ridiculously thick guys and I have not owned this polish that long to be honest. So I gotta, you know, thin it out a little bit. This one is called Snow What You Want from Sally Hansen. This has shreds of satin white glitter and they're sitting in a clear base. I find this topper to be so unique and so beautiful. It's just so pretty. My favorite topper though, white topper of all time is Pure At My Whistle from OPI. I find this topper to be super unique because it has a silver, a silver shimmer and white hexes that are slightly transparent. So when they layer over top of each other, you see the layering effect to where I don't really see that with this topper from Sally Hansen because the, the glitters are satin, but they're not transparent. Still beautiful though. I just wanted to mention the difference between the two. A silver topper always comes in handy. This beat out the silver topper that I have from Essie for the very reason that this has shreds of metallic uh, glitter. But the silver one from Essie is really beautiful as well. And I've had that one far longer. This one also has hexes. It just has the, sh the silver shreds of glitter. I have another silver one that's more gunmetally and actually leans almost like it has a purple undertone. This is called Atomic, Atomic Splash. And it's from Orally. It's part of their FX line, which I don't think they make anymore. So let me show you guys a comparison between the two so you can see. The difference it's just such a beautiful beautiful glitter topper a glitter topper that has a mix of silver white and gold find this one to be unique as well this is dreams on a silver platter 
I love this glitter. It's so beautiful. Two warm flaky gold toppers. Two gold flaky gold toppers. Okay. <laughs> yes, I wanted both of them. One because uh, it's large. The flakes are larger and they scatter. This one can definitely build up on its own. I can't believe they lab labeled this a topper because this loads up a lot on the little flakies and the flakes in these this Nina polish are smaller than the ones in, from Soya. So this is labeled gold flaky topper from Nina Ultra Pro. It's very red tone as you can see. And my favorite topper of all time is Maria Luisa from Zoya. It's like my first love. It's it, that's a lie. It's gaining momentum from OPI, but this one beats out gaining momentum for me. They're just so, so beautiful. And then a strong yellow gold. Now this polish can get okay, that's an, on its own, but I don't use it on its own. I use it more for detail, like, and stuff like that. So this is a very, a very strong yellow gold uh, polish. I think it's called Glittering Gold or something like that. It's from a More Than Magic line from Target. I don't know. I found this little guy, Buy It's Lonesome in Target and they at the register they just charged me for it but i want to show you guys next to solange if you are familiar with solange and how yellow it is look at how much more yellow this polish is that is the reason why this polish is sitting up on this nail polish rack a gold that has a mix of micro gold micro pink glitter and then larger pink metallic hexes is a sparkler scent off. I've talked about this polish a lot. I'm pretty sure you guys are sick of hearing about this polish, but I truly do love it guys. And it is my favorite. It's so beautiful. Two pink glitters. These are glitter toppers. This is called a cut above. It's a pink, like a rosy pink metallic glitter. And they're larger hexes, right? And then this one from OPI. And this is called Confetti Ready. It is so beautiful, guys. I love this. This has gold, blue, silver, and then micro pink holographic glitter. This is amazing. This is one of the best polishes that OPM has put out in a long time, in my humble opinion, because I love coppers. And then a red glitter topper. I mentioned this one, which is Freedom from LA Colors. Just a solid gl red glitter. A rainbow glitter. This is Turn It Up from... OPI. Just get varying tones of like varying colors within uh, this bottle. It's super, super fun. Any rainbow glitter. I'll, I pulled out another one that I wanted to kind of mention just in case because this one's not available anymore. This is called, or maybe on a discounted website, this is called Chasing Rain Rainbows from OPI. It's a rainbow glitter, but they do make this one from Sally Hansen. I think this one's still available. It's called um, Confetti Trace. I think a Christmas glitter topper is always necessary, guys, especially for ugly Christmas sweaters and doing the really glittering, uh, tacky nails, which I love. I did an ugly Christmas sweater just this past year, and I was obsessed with it. There's so much freaking glitter on my nails. This is called Bling Tree. It's from the Sally's Girl line that Sally's Beauty used to carry a long time ago, and I love this. Christmas glitter. It has red, green, and white hexes. And the white hexes, some of them are larger, and it's just so beautiful. My favorite black and white glitter topper is Pixel Perfect from Sally Hansen. If you guys are, I don't know if you guys are surprised that Mango Sunrise from 90 Lacquer is not up here. <laughs> this is the reason why. Mango Sunrise is an orange curly with matte black glitters in it that I adore, guys. I really do adore it. But I can put this over top of any neon polish and get a similar effect. It is not going to be the same because um, she adds shreds of matte glitter and that's a curly polish, but it gives me a similar look. And what I love about this one specifically is that it has black bar glitters. That's what I feel makes it unique. Another blue glitter, but almost periwinkle. You see that? Let me compare it to this other blue one though, so you guys can see. Almost, It almost looks slightly purple, right? This is called uh, Stroke of Brilliance from Essie. I really like the Lux FX line from Essie. And then LA Colors, this is called Brave. It's a sapphire blue glitter topper. So beautiful. Two flaky glitter toppers from KB Shimmer. I've been asked before um, if, you know, somebody's just now getting into indies, what would I recommend you buy? My answer would be toppers. 
that's personally because you can buy creams from anywhere and really transform your manicure with very unique toppers like these this is yes weekend this shifts from a teal to like a purple you see in the green it's so pretty that blue green and then this one for the fall is take it or leave it and it's fall in a bottle you see the reds the greens the golds yellows things like that it's just so amazing to wear yes weekend i can really wear it any time of the year two green ones my all-time favorite first love <laughs> is uh green ocean from simple colors they don't make this one anymore but i saw that hollow taco has one that's similar what i what i find difficult to find or replace this one is that a lot of flaky toppers are like this. They, they have this kind of color tone or even this one, right? Not often do I find one that has that green and blue shift. And this one has micro hex little glitters, almost like circle, I don't know, smaller glitters. I don't, I don't know what shape they are, but they're smaller glitters, but they also have flakes in here that are slightly transparent and it's just such a beautiful beautiful topper i will forever love this i finished the entire bottle and then i filled it up with base coat to make more of it because there was plenty of glitter left over guys no sense in wasting any of these beauties and then the other one that i pulled to out is fantasies from sally hansen this is such a perfect christmas green put this over top of let's say off tropic or put it over top of a peacocky type of polish right amazing holiday manicure it's just perfect so this is fantasies and it's green but it has those blue tones which is why it's called fantasy and looking at my glitter toppers i'm thinking i kind of want to add some kind of gold and black glitter mix and i can't decide between these two this one from sally hansen is called bold gold and then the one from china glaze is called boogie down the china glaze one i find to be a little bit more unique it also though has white glitter incorporated but i really like the tone of the yellow glitters and the one in sally hansen so and these would make like such a fun maybe birthday manis new year's manis type of a thing i'm really liking the yellow gold glitter and the sally hansen bold gold so that one is actually gonna go right in here i think what i'm gonna do is leave all of these polishes up here um and just keep my all of my favorites both from glitter toppers to just regular polishes right up so i can display them at all times i think this is just a reflection of my taste and you know, like everybody else I mentioned earlier, you're, we're always uh, working to curate our perfect nail polish collection. And I feel like, you know, I'm getting there. I'm still working on it, obviously, you know, because it takes some time. So I hope that you guys had a lot of fun going through my fantasy nail polish curated collection. I hope that you guys give it a try. It'll be interesting to know what your ultimate favorites are out of all of your polishes. It's just nice to see. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope that, again, that you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.